Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh my gosh, thank you for having me. My name is Tori Spelling, probably best known as Donna from Beverly Hills 90210. Um, but also from my life, <laughs> I've been on a lot of reality shows, so you probably will recognize me. Oh, I love your house. This oh, is adorable. Oh, thank you. We just moved, so we're a little... Oh, I love it. ...in, uh, in limbo. Awesome. No I don't get this starstruck of, like, actors. I've met them all. But, like, reality stars, I get starstruck of. Because that's the shows I watch. <laughs> so I feel a little starstruck meeting him right now. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you again for having me. Oh, I'm really thanks for coming. ...to do this. Um, you mentioned your name was Tori. Was yes, T-O-R-I. T -O -R -I. I think Tyler did not know who I was. It's hard for me because I'm never usually not known. Tori introduced herself as just Tori, and then I realized the only notable Tori that I know is Tori Spelling, and then I was like, oh, I think that's you. <laughs> Before I start, I always kind of like to just explain my process. Okay. I have had readings in the past. I still hold out hope, but I've never quite gotten the reading that has changed my life. And then, you know, obviously, as far as this goes, um, objects are always really good to have. Okay. Um, I see that you might have some objects yes. here. <laughs> so. I definitely want to um, reach out to people that have passed in my life. Um, I even brought some objects from people that have been important to me. A lot of them I just want to find closure with. Would you mind if I hold on to one of them? Sure. Um, can I you? Sure, yeah, we can try that one. I brought my father's typewriter. Um, he was his first typewriter. He did all his rewrites on. It's a big deal. Alrighty, so we will see what we can do. His passing was huge, huge to me. Yes, this connection, it's the weirdest thing. Huh, okay. Um, I'm not getting much off of this one. Um, but I'm gonna actually hand this back and I yeah. might, there we go. That's my father's first typewriter, and he was a big writer before he was a producer. Wow. And he used to sit there and write and rewrite all his scripts on this first typewriter. That's how he did all his rewrites. It's funny, whenever I meet with psychics, the first thing they see, they're like, your father's coming through. And that always makes me hesitant. So I'm like, well, that's an obvious go-to. My father's passed away. They're, they don't know anyone else. They're going to go to my father. So it was almost kind of nice that he didn't come with you because I know you're the real deal, and it's like, if you didn't come, you didn't feel like coming. I find that sometimes when people don't come through with mm -hmm. a message, it's just because they, you know, are completely fine and are content and are at peace. That makes me happy. Absolutely. And I thought for sure by bringing that, my dad would come through, because everyone always thinks that they can read my dad around me. So it was kind of more reassuring knowing that, you know, my dad wasn't a very in-front-of-camera type person. He always was behind the camera. I'm actually going to hold on to a different object and see if we can... We'll, we'll kind of go all across the board. Okay. Interesting. Very cool. Okay. Let's get that. Um, I do have this individual that's popping in that's referencing, it's a man, um, and he's acknowledging that he literally, like, he's bringing me to the heart. There would have been the knowledge of prior heart problems. Yeah. Um, there's an acknowledgement of this, of, like, I know that I had a heart issue yeah. um, and that this was something for him that... He, he, he had an insight into. Um, and the way that this comes across is in, in this, there is a reference in his own way to a bit of an apology in his passing. Does that make sense for you? Yeah. Yeah, it's um, my best friend. Okay. And he, d he died of a heart sure. condition. And what was his first name? Jeremy. Jeremy. Jeremy was my best friend, and he also dated my other best friend. And it was the three of us always. We were like, we did everything together. I can tell communication style-wise that he hasn't came through before, most likely. Yeah, he's never come through when I've done any, tried to do readings or anything. Interesting. Nothing, so right, right, right. it's been hard. Um, he really didn't, I mean, there's a reference as he's coming through. Mm -hmm. I feel like I go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. I feel like I know that something is off and there's just a reference almost to a feeling of like, I'm sorry that that didn't get, you know, conveyed mm. to, the, to the fullest extent. When was the last time that you two actually crossed paths? The night before he died. Okay. We were at a bar the night before. Jeremy and I, we locked each other in the bathroom. We were like, it's okay, boy and girl peeing in the same bathroom. We're fine, you know, we're best friends. And I remember going to the bathroom and he's like, I can't believe you dragged me here. So there was the significance of the bathroom. It wasn't like I knew, like, Jeremy's gonna die. But I remember thinking something wasn't right. So it, 
And I, I don't think you ever get that feeling back. You always wish you had that extra moment, that extra night. If I had played that night out before differently, I would have had an extra moment with him. I could have done things different. But when it comes um, to you, he's referencing to the thought of a phone call, there's very clearly an acknowledgement of nothing could have been done to get me here in time. So for anybody who has any guilt of like, could we have gotten there soon enough? The clear acknowledgement is that no, you know, there was nothing that could have been done. Mm. The day he passed away, I remember answering my phone, which I never answered my phone. And it was his partner saying, Jeremy, just literally, his heart just exploded is all he kept saying. He went to a heart, he had a heart attack, something happened. I'm on my way, I'm behind the ambulance following them to the hospital. And I just remember turning around and heading to the hospital. And um, you feel this out of control feeling because a life is being taken from you and there's nothing you can do about it. I just would have liked to have said goodbye. Sure, yes. sure. I think that's understandable. It's, it's so interesting because as you're talking about that, he's putting a significance on his smile for some reason. I don't know what this is. <laughs> I think the smile. He's showing me a smiley face over and over and over again. It's so funny, his smile. That's his right smile about. was a big thing. He'd be like this. Yeah, it's like it's like a cheesy grin. Uh, yeah. Like cheesy grin. I knew the smile. I can't replicate it, but I know the smile because he'd always be like this and point to a smile and be like, like that. It was this, this big smile. So when he kept doing it behind Tyler, and Tyler's like, he's showing me, he's showing me. I'm like, I know exactly what he's showing you. I can visualize it. And we would laugh about that smile, and that would be our re recollection, would be that smile. Sure, absolutely. It was so nice to reconnect, to know that he came through. He oversees our friendship every day. And I can thank Tyler for that. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much for so having me. Nice absolutely. I leave today even more of a fan of Tyler. Have a great, great day. Thank you, you again. Hi, See Tyler. you soon. Thanks. Bye. He's just as magnificent in person as he is on TV.